This is a 2021 Airstream Interstate GT. It's a 24-foot motorhome that's built on Mercedes' latest 3500 extended Sprinter chassis. From the cockpit, it features the creature comforts of modern Mercedes vehicles, but the rest is all Airstream. Stay tuned, as today I'll be providing a tour of my new motorhome. And that starts right now on The Gadget Guru. Typically, I would produce this type of video while standing outside or seated inside the motorhome, but, well, I'm in Florida. And even though it's fall, it's still hot and humid. So today I'll get a bit creative and shoot this from the comfort of my air-conditioned studio. So allow me to say up front, this will be a multi-part video as if I try to go through all the features and functions of the Airstream Interstate, well, the video would be quite long. Now, let's get started with the basics. This is Airstream Center State GT. It's a 24-foot motorhome that's based on Mercedes' recently upgraded 3500 extended chassis. By the way, the engine is a 3-liter V6 turbo diesel that delivers 188 horsepower and 325 pounds of torque. The transmission on the new 3500 chassis has been increased to seven speeds and the stated range is 16 to 18 miles per gallon on the highway. The tank capacity, something that you'll want to know if you're looking at this for a motorhome, are 27 gallons for the fresh water, 21 gallons for gray, and 13 gallons for the black tank. One of the features that separates the Interstate from the rest of the Class B pack is that it comes standard with the rear air suspension that promises to smooth out the ride and to limit porpoising. Since this unit was built after September 1st of 2020, it included a new feature from Airstream. Two 100 amp hour deep cycle battle borne lithium batteries along with an upgraded solar controller. The main benefits of lithium batteries is that they charge up to five times faster than lead acid batteries and can deliver a full charge overnight while plugged into 30 amp campground power. They also deliver two to three times more usable power as they can be discharged completely where standard batteries typically can only go to around 50%. Lithium batteries are typically much lighter than standard batteries, and anyone who's ever owned an RV already knows. Weight considerations are important, as every chassis has weight limitations. While the exterior, with the exception of discrete Airstream badging, is all Mercedes, the interior is unmistakably all Airstream. While this video is focused on the exterior features and functions, a detailed walkthrough of the interior along with my impressions will come in a future video. So don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and also follow me on Facebook so that you'll be notified when that video is posted. Allow me to state that long-term viewers of my channel know that I've owned two motorhomes. Both were built on bus chassis. The first was a 1957 flexible Starliner, and the most recent was a 2014 Prevo. I'll point out that this Airstream cost about 10% of the price of a new Prevo, and while my expectations are realistic, to compare the two would be unfair, as there are pros and cons to each model. The main pro to a motorhome this size is that it will take you places that you could never visit in a full-size motorhome. Now, as you can see, it easily fits in my driveway, and that's something I never attempted with my Prevo. I'll get to a downsizing comparison in a future video once I've spent more time in the Airstream. One of the first things you'll notice about the Airstream Interstate exterior is the paint. Or more accurately, the lack of painted or stick-on swirlies. Now, in my opinion, having a single color exterior paint scheme delivers a more discreet and classy look, especially when compared to some of the designs adorned on many RVs these days. While the exterior looks like a standard extended van, well, looks can be deceiving as concealed behind various panels are many of the same connections you'll find on a full-size motorhome. Let's take a look at these connections and start with the driver's side of the motorhome. Starting from the rear, this is the 30 amp power connection. It features a chrome plated cap that is hinged to provide easy access and secures with the twist to keep it in place when driving. This is the exhaust vent for the water heater and next to it is a city water connection. Now, when connected to a water source, the built-in water pump is not needed as it obtains its water pressure from the source. 
While a pressure regulator is built into the motorhome, it's recommended to use an outboard water filter when bringing water into the coach. This is the filter that I'll be using on the motorhome, and I learned about it based on recommendations by Mike and Jennifer Wendland of RVLifestyle.com. It's a two-piece system that promises to provide a good level of filtration. This small pipe is the exhaust for the 2.5 kilowatt Odin propane power generator, which delivers 20 amps of power. Down here is what I like to call the dirty box, as this contains a built-in macerator hose and connectors for dumping the black and gray tank. A press of a button retracts the hose. This hatch conceals the switches for the dump valves, and while I've yet to use this function, the buttons are clearly labeled, and it looks fairly simple to operate. Also included in this area is an input for a campground cable connection and a port to route the cable while keeping the door locked. As stated, this motorhome is new to me, and while I haven't had to dump the tanks yet, I'm looking forward to seeing how this macerator system compares to the gravity systems found on most motorhomes, including the two that I've owned in the past. The next compartment conceals an exterior shower outlet that uses either the water pump and built-in water tank, or when connected, the city water for rinsing off after a day at the beach or for washing the dog. The quick connect coiled hose is included. This is a gravity water fill, and to use you simply insert a clean water hose and turn on the water to fill the tank. It's not an autofill system, nor is there any way to monitor the levels from the outside. So unless you have someone inside monitoring the gauges, when you see water purring out, well, you know it's full. And this is the furnace exhaust vent. Oh, one more thing. Did you notice that there's no fuel cap? So how do you add diesel? Well, this is quite ingenious, as it's concealed in a panel that's behind the driver's door. Well, when you're at the pump, you can open the center panel and then close the driver's door. This way, you can lock the door while pumping the fuel to keep the interior contents safe from theft. And when the door is closed, the hidden cap keeps the contents of the tank secure. I think that's pretty cool. Now, let's take a look at the exterior of the passenger side. This is a 120-volt GFCI power outlet that allows you to connect up to two electrical devices, such as a TV while camping or tailgating at the stadium. Next to the outlet is a cable connection that allows an external TV to connect to the built-in roof antenna. Allow me to note that while the instruction manual states there's an HDMI outlet in this location, well, as you can see, that was not included. The wheels are top-tier Alcoa aluminum and can be cleaned with soap and water. The valve stems for both the inner and outer tires are located within the wheel openings. And while they can be a bit tricky to remove the stem caps when checking the air pressure, it wasn't all that difficult. Now, this is important as for some odd reason, Mercedes does not incorporate a tire pressure monitoring system in this style of Sprinter chassis. Now, having a tire pressure device such as one of these models that feature a dual end will simplify checking the air pressure. Behind this door is the LP tank remote fill and shutoff location. This unit uses propane to power the generator, heat, hot water heater, and stove. A second valve allows for the connection of a propane-powered barbecue grill. Now, getting in and out is easy as a new feature of this chassis is electric doors that can be operated with the key fob or, if it's unlocked, by pulling the handle. Opening the door also triggers the sliding step. Simplifying entry and exit for the driver and passenger, well, both of these areas feature an integrated running board style step for easy access. Both the front and rear bumpers incorporate parking sensors, a car-like feature that I wish I would have had on my other motorhomes. On the rear of the motorhome is a panel which cleverly conceals the towing connections. This chassis is rated to tow up to 5,000 pounds, so yes, it has the ability to tow a car or a small trailer. While the instruction manual shows pin connections for the lighting and braking here, well, for some reason, it's now being placed below the bumper. While it's not the most convenient location, it is accessible. 
Another noteworthy feature are the cameras, as there's a bunch of them located around the motorhome. Not just one, but two rear view cameras are incorporated above the rear doors. One is for the Mercedes infotainment system, and just like most cars, it's triggered when the transmission is placed in reverse and features sight lines, while the parking sensors provide audible warnings for easy backing up. The other is Airstream's always-on rear camera monitor, and it acts as an electronic rear view mirror. While it provides a wide panoramic view, I have noticed that even in the brightest setting, it is a bit dim when used in the daytime. Incorporated into the two side mirrors are cameras that automatically switch to side views when the turn signal is activated. Another noteworthy feature is the blind spot monitoring system that works similar to the ones found in newer automobiles. Believe it or not, when I was attempting to make the decision between an interstate and the larger Atlas model, well, this was a feature that pushed me to the interstate over the Atlas as due to the expanded sides that are added by the converter, well, B-plus models typically don't incorporate blind spot sensors. Taking a look underneath the chassis, you'll see that I opted for the $6,900 leveling jack option. While this van is currently parked on pavers in my driveway, I won't be providing a demonstration at this moment, as I don't want to risk cracking the pavers. This is pretty much an automatic system, where you can press a button, either on this device here, or on a wireless remote to have it automatically level the motorhome. It also has a feature that, just prior to dumping the tanks, it can lean to assist the emptying of the tanks. If you're comparing the interstate to a full-size motorhome, well, you may have already noticed that there's absolutely no storage areas on the side of the van. However, there is a good amount of storage in the rear and inside the motorhome. Let's take a closer look. While I'm planning a video dedicated to organizing this area, here's the basics. In the rear, it's a bit like a puzzle, as some of the mechanical systems are located under the rear sofa bed. The overall width of this area is 63 inches, and the deepest section is on the right side, with the 44 by 28 inch section that can easily hold two airline size bags with room to spare. Allow me to note that the seat belt anchors are in this area, and if you have passengers in the rear, you may need to jockey some of your items so they don't interfere with the seat belts. On the left side, you have a 30 inch wide by 24 inch deep section as well. While I'll save the interior walkthrough for a future video, I can say that I've been a fan of Airstream designs for quite some time, and this one doesn't disappoint. In my opinion, the styling seems to share more with the private jet than it does with the typical RV. It's aesthetically pleasing and functional. As stated, I'll save the interior tour for another video, but I can say the amount of storage in the interstate is quite generous, as there's both overhead compartments as well as under-counter drawers. I will say that Airstream did a remarkable job in maximizing these areas for storage, and it's quite amazing when you consider that all this is inside a 24-foot van. Inside, you have four overhead storage areas on the passenger side, two on the driver's side, and a very large and deep overhead bin in the rear. Believe it or not, you can store, yet again, two airline size bags side by side and still have room in the front or utilizing the side bins, yes, you can fit a set of golf clubs. And depending on the size of the bag, possibly two of them will fit in this area. Because the GT model has the extended galley area, there's quite a bit of drawer storage incorporated into the interstate. You also have a closet area with removable shelves and full extension storage drawers. While there's quite a variety of Class B models on the market today, well, they're not all created equally, and much of the differences are personal preference. Personally, what drew me to Airstream was knowing that they ordered the Mercedes chassis fully optioned. Not every Class B manufacturer does this. And the style of the interiors also. I just enjoy Airstream interiors. You can bet that I'll be doing more about the Mercedes technical driving features in a future video. But as you can see, it looks and feels like a top-of-the-line Mercedes SUV. 
While I only have a couple hours behind the wheel, I can say it's very easy to maneuver. The visibility is excellent and the seats are very comfortable. Many of the Mercedes driving systems are similar to their automobile lineup and that's a very good thing. However, some of them operate a bit differently. More on that later. Now, this video is running quite a bit longer than what I had initially planned, so I'll provide a tour of the interior in part two of this video series. When that video is completed, a link will appear magically right up here and on the screen in just a moment. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please take a moment and give it a thumbs up and feel free to leave a comment below. And don't forget to subscribe and click the bell. Oh, one more thing, if you like this video, you're going to like this one. And if you like that one, you're going to like one of these. That's it for now. I'm the Gadget Guru, Andy Parr.